Hi everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to my review of ICT's YouTube mentorship program for Lesson 17. I'm really excited about today's video because it's applying the concepts from ICT's YouTube mentorship program to Forex. Forex is what ICT is best known for and how most people are introduced to his trading concept. So I know a lot of people out there were looking forward to Forex making its way into the YouTube mentorship program. So let's not waste any more time. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and let's jump into today's video. Today's video is Lesson 17 in ICT's 2022 YouTube Mentorship Program. And our outline for today's video is applying the YouTube Mentorship Program concepts to Forex. And so in today's video, we'll be covering the New York Kill Zone, institutional price levels, and then ICT's trading concepts using the Euro USD or the Euro as an example from the 5th of April. So we'll start with the New York Kill Zone. Now you'll remember from other videos we've discussed it, is that ICT's trading concepts prioritize time over price. And this is one of the key things that differentiates ICT's teachings over other trading concepts. ICT will use specific sessions at specific times to trade Forex, and he calls these his ICT kill zones. And so they cover the Asian session, the London session, and the New York session. For FX specifically, and in this video, ICT recommends using the New York kill zone, which goes from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. New York time. Keep in mind that this is different to what we've been learning in the ICT YouTube mentorship program so far, which is still the New York Open, but it's based on the index future. So using the S&P and the NASDAQ and using the 8.30 to midday or the morning session as the specific session and time of day that we're looking to optimize trading from. So just like we've covered in the other ICT mentorship videos, the time of day is very important. And in FX, specifically trading the New York kill zone increases our probability of success with our setups. And that's why we focus on this particular time of day. And in this case, using the New York kill zone. The last thing we'll cover before we jump into our trade example is institutional price levels. Now these are price levels which are going to be influential on price action and these are often called by other people you know big figure or round numbers but ICT calls them his institutional price levels and in FX these are going to be the typical round numbers of 00, 20, 50 and 80. Now the reason why these numbers are influential is because they're commonly used in commerce. Now they're often used in commerce because of their ease of reference or simplicity. And so as a consequence of this, there's always going to be liquidity resting at these levels or at these institutional price levels. So you'll see an example of these institutional price levels in our trade example in today's video, but just make sure you keep these in mind for your trading in the future. So as always, we'll start with our daily chart on the Euro USD or the Euro. So you can see after this move downwards, the market consolidated sort of sideways and up. And you can see we traded up into this order block that we have just here. And along the way, we created these relative equal highs, buy side liquidity just here. So as the market traded up into that level, you can see we took out that buy side liquidity, those relative equal highs. We traded up into that order block. And when we did that, you can see we've painted this swing high. So that's when we have a three candle formation with the high of the middle candle higher than the highs of the candles either side of it. So this is how we know that this move is likely to reverse and not continue through and start going higher is because we've painted this swing high pattern just here. So you can see that's what the market's done. It's traded then downwards on these three consecutive down close candles and it hasn't quite taken out the sell side liquidity here and then there's relative equal lows here or sell side liquidity down here. Now, if we play the market forward, at this point, our bias would still be bearish, but we're gonna play the market forward and just see what happens. And so you can see we have another big down close candle. We take out this sell side liquidity that's resting here, and we just very lightly tag this relative equal low sell side liquidity down here. And if you look to the side, you can see we've hit this institutional price level, this 109 level. So that's what we were talking about earlier in the video. So this is one of ICT's institutional price levels and the markets come down and touch that, which just coincides with these relative equal lows we have down here. So if we zoom into our one hour chart now, remember we've rolled back 
to the 4th of April. So we're now trying to predict what will happen on the 5th of April. We know from the daily chart when we roll it forward that we're gonna take out this sell side liquidity here and take out these relative equal lows sell side liquidity down here at our institutional level, which is about 109. So if we're on the 4th of April, how would we use the current price action to determine how far price will go? And so what we can do is we can take this price action here, so you can see on the one hour chart, we've painted a bearish fair value gap. So that's our three candle formation here. You can see the market's traded up into it. And as we've done that, in this range from this candle to here, we can put our fib across that. So remember, we don't use the wicks, we use the bodies of those candles. So if we go from there to there and we draw our fib out, you can see we start to build some confluence with the price levels that we've already marked out in terms of the sell side liquidity. So at the previous swing low, you can see this sell side liquidity matches up quite neatly with this first standard deviation away here at about 109.45. And then if we go down to here to our relative equal lows, you can see at about three to three and a half standard deviations away, we're at about that 109 level or that institutional price level. Now remember, these price levels are only possible if we break the swing low to start. So already, if we're trying to predict where price will go in the next session, we have a bearish fair value gap that's painting on the one hour chart. We have that price action from our daily chart, which is indicating a short term bearish trend. So we're expecting lower prices. We have sell side liquidity here. We have relative equal lows and sell side liquidity resting at our institutional price level, which is 109. And that all coincides with the levels that we're also painting on our FIB from the range that we've tracked on this one hour chart. So all these factors are creating confluence on our hypothesis that we think prices are gonna go lower. Now, as we move into the 5th of April session, you can see the uh, midnight open that I have painted here with this green dotted line. So that's the beginning of the session on the 5th. And you can see we have a down closed candle and I've marked out the opening price, which is the midnight opening price here in green. So you can see the market trades up into that. So we go into a premium before we start to trade back down. Now, this move up is your sort of classic Judah swing. And you can see that move actually rebalances this fair value gap that we've created on the way down towards the end of the session on the 4th. So remember, because we're expecting lower prices, this is exactly what we wanna see. We wanna see price trading above that key level. So that's our due to swing before it starts trading lower. So this all ties back into our power of three concept that we've learned in some of the previous lessons. And so just briefly, what that means is at the open, we're expecting a manipulation higher before we have the market trade down lower and we get distribution at the close and the low towards the end of the session. So we'll zoom in now to our 15 minute chart. Now you can see the bearish fair value gap which we formed on that one hour chart. Now we've transposed that down onto our 15 minute chart and we've just dragged it out. So we go into our New York kill zone. So I've delineated the ICT New York kill zone here in orange. So you can see these dotted lines here. So this is our kill zone just here. And remember that's between 7 a.m. to 10 a.m and that's New York time. So our bearish fair value gap, which we've transposed onto the 15 minute chart, you can see it's not quite as clean as it is on the one hour chart, but it's still relevant to us. And you can see that price trades up into that prior to the New York kill zone. And it also trades above that midnight open level. So because we're trying to go short, ideally we wanna be going short above that key level, above that midnight New York open. So you can see as we go into that New York kill zone part of the session, we create this bearish fair value gap here. So that's our three candle formation, one, two, three. And you can see this whole move breaks market structure just here. Now the market then trades back up into that bearish fair value gap. You can see it overshoots it slightly. The bodies of the candles, they respect that fair value gap quite well, but you can see we wick through that and we go actually into this bearish order block just up here before we start to trade downwards. Now remember, your order block is the last up close candle before you have this down move, which has a fair value gap in it. So that's our order block there. You can see price trades up into that before it starts to trade back down below that 
New York midnight open, and then down through that bearish fair value gap. And this all happens right in our ICT kill zone, our New York kill zone, which is exactly where we want to be trading. It's where we want to get set in our particular position. So zooming again now to our five minute chart. Now, just remember it's in the ICT kill zone that we want to be hunting for our setup. So we can see the price action here. Now remember we've transposed our data across from the one hour. So this is our bearish fair value gap here from the one hour. This is our order block from the 15 minute chart. And this is our bearish fair value gap from the 15 minute chart here as well. So, so this is that price action where we've traded down, created that bearish fair value gap. The market's traded back up into that fair value gap, and then it wicked into that bearish order block before trading down. You can see we created this sell side liquidity here when that bearish fair value gap was formed in that move that broke market structure just here. We've come down, we've taken out that sell side liquidity before trading higher. Now, the important thing if you're trading into the New York session is we also have another opening price at 8.30. So I've marked that here in green. So we now have an opening price at 8.30 and we have our opening price here at midnight. But because we're going short, we still ideally want to be short above that midnight opening price. And so we could definitely have used this trade in the bearish fair value gap. So trading back up into it on the five minute chart and then either traded the tag into that order block on the 15 minute chart or just taken the trade as the market came back up into that bearish fair value gap on the five minute chart from our 15 minute chart. Now on this particular day, there were two price impacting events and I've marked them here on the chart in orange at 10 o'clock. Now in this case, the two events were the ISM services PMI and also one of the FOMC members speaking. Now, we don't really actually care too much about the contents of these events. We just need to know they're there and anticipate volatility around these particular events. So you can see after we've taken out this sell side liquidity, we have our new opening price here at 8.30. Our volatility in the market starts to increase as we approach this news event. But you can see even though we trade back up into this bearish fair value gap from the 15 minute chart, we actually paint a swing high here and we don't breach the previous swing high here, which was an intermediate term high. Now this particular swing high is an intermediate term high because it has a down move, which has a bearish fair value gap inside it. And so if the market is going to trade lower, then this particular high can't be higher than the intermediate term high here. And as we've talked about before, because we've painted a swing high pattern here, which is our three candle formation with the center candle having a higher high than the two candles either side of it, that increases the probability that we're gonna get a move now to the downside. So we're zooming out for the final time now to our four minute chart. Now, the first thing to note is that we're actually taking a trade outside of the ICT kill zone. Now, in this case, this is okay because we have this high impact news event here coming out at 10 o'clock. That gives us the ability to push that window out an extra hour. So as long as we're taking our trade inside of 11 o'clock, then that's still okay. The other thing to take note of is we still obviously have a bearish bias. So we're looking for lower prices. We're looking for short entries. And we're obviously trying to operate inside this ICT kill zone, albeit we're looking at an extended kill zone because of this high impact news event. Now we have our two prices in play, our two opening prices. We have our opening price at 8.30 and we have our opening price at midnight. Now in the event that we're now starting to trade post that 8.30 part of the session. And also keep in mind, we're looking at taking a trade now, anticipating that we didn't take any of these earlier setups in the session. We'd be using then the 8.30 opening price as our key level. Now, the reason we wanna use this 8.30 opening price as opposed to our midnight opening price is we want any particular move up, so any due to swing up to be maximized. So we wanna get the maximum swing possible. So we're gonna use whichever one is the lowest to give us the maximum due to swing possible. And this is gonna help us to most easily identify our short setup. So if we zoom in a little bit closer, you can see we get our classic fair value gap setup. So we have our three candle formation here, one, two, and three, and we get this small bearish fair value gap 
formed in here. So you can see we get a break in market structure here as the market trades back down and we go back up into that fair value gap before the market trades away. Now if we scroll back over, you can see we have our sell side liquidity here at that standard deviation mark that we talked about earlier. And then we have our relative equal lows down here at our three and a half standard deviations down here, which is also at that institutional price level at 109. So you can see if we lay our sell trade over that, we'd have our limit at the high of that third candle, we'd have our stop at the high of the first or the second candle. And you can see in this example, if we trade it all the way down to that institutional price level down there at about 109, we get a risk reward of about eight times. So one of the things we need to take into account for exits is you need to incorporate a little bit of wiggle room because you obviously have to compensate for the spread. So depending on your level of experience, you'd have either three to five pips or even up to 10 pips if you're quite new to trading, just to make sure you get that exit because you don't want to go through all this effort to find a great setup, get into that trade and then miss your exit just because you're that little bit too precise, maybe a little bit too greedy on setting your exit level. It's always better to be a little bit more forgiving and guarantee locking in that profit. So there you go. There's my review of lesson 17 of ICT's 2022 mentorship program. It's not surprising to me that the model taught in the YouTube mentorship program is just as effective in Forex as it is in index futures. I've used the model successfully myself in other asset classes and I've seen plenty of YouTubers do the same in different asset classes as well. I'm looking forward to doing some more testing using ICT's concepts in Forex and I'd be interested to hear what experiences you've had using ICT concepts in other asset classes as well. I hope you got something out of today's video. If you did, it would be great if you could like it because that helps other people to find it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you never miss an update. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.